In a small resort town in the Sierra Nevadas, black bears and humans live together in a four square mile area. Ma'am, move away. And there's only one man to keep a dangerous situation from turning deadly. Get out of there, get out. Shame on you. This is the story of Steve Searles. It's his job to keep people safe from bears. Stop it. And bears safe from people. Leave that bear alone, folks. So when someone here calls 911 about a bear, 911 calls Steve Searles, the bear whisperer. All right, all right, what a example of, that, of a bear, just huge claws, huge Popeye arms, and that huge head. And now here we are in the middle of town. Mm. It's great quiet time and thoughtful time when you're with, that close with a bear. It's 7 a.m. in Mammoth Lakes, California. While most people are just rising from bed, Steve Searles is taking inventory of dozens of black bears who make this their home. A bear in our community is seen as a, a quality of life. When we see a bear go through our front yard, it makes the day better. And this Eastern Sierra location is ideally situated for a large bear population. We have just a huge amount of habitat in our community, uh, lots of green belts and parkways. And uh, of course, the community being so small, uh, we're surrounded by thousands of square miles of habitat. Mammoth Lakes is a resort town, a getaway for millions every year. And bears are the most celebrated residents. Both locals and tourists adore them. Wow, you don't see this every day. A bear was eating off of a bush, and uh, so we got to get up really close to it. Up here on the lake, we've actually experienced the bears coming down in the water and bathing and just kind of splashing around. It's just it's spectacular. I never got this close to a bear. What people forget is that these creatures can be dangerous. Adult males can be seven feet tall, weigh up to 800 pounds, run 35 miles per hour, and kill someone with a single swipe of their razor sharp claws. It's going out. It's coming. Could a black bear be dangerous? Absolutely. By his own will, he could strike out and hurt someone, or it could be an accident where you have him combined in an area and he knocks you over trying to get away. But for more than a decade, not a single person has been hurt by a bear in Mammoth Lakes. Steve Searles plans to keep it that way. He's a self-taught black bear expert the town has come to rely on to keep bears and people safe. Good morning. Good morning. You stay out of trouble last night? Mm. 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 I hear you talking. Oh, wow. Chopping, uh, blowing. These are all just uh, him asking me, gosh, can you leave me alone? I want to get some sleep. It's kind of like I act in the morning, too. I know, I know. Every spring, the bears come out of hibernation. Before long, they become eating machines. In just six months, they have to put on as much as 200 pounds to survive the next winter. The easiest way to do that is to forage in town. Black bears are real smart. Uh, they learn real early how to get food, and not wild food, to get into a building, get into a vehicle, trash can, or a bird feeder. They realize it's effective, and they stick with it. Nothing could be worse, because once the bear learns those bad habits, and they spend more time around people, there's a greater probability that something might happen where a bear could hurt a person. In most other towns, bears that get too close to humans are routinely destroyed. But in Mammoth, where the animals are so highly prized, it's Steve's job to keep bears and people apart. 
and he's come up with some pretty unconventional ways for doing that. As much as I care and love for the bears, I'm professionally mean to them. Get out of there. I will haze or harass them. Let's go. Come on. But it reinstills their natural fear of humans. I know, just back up and we'll be all good. The psychological play that I have on bears and the ability to uh, outwit them, to uh, con them, to scare them, dominate them, if you will. The bears in our community think that I'm the biggest, baddest bear of all. Shut up. No one's sure what the bears think, but clearly what Steve's doing is working. Hold right there. All right, you guys, across the bridge, let's go. Since he started his unique brand of wildlife management in Mammoth 12 years ago, he hasn't had to shoot a single bear. If you're going to shoot a bear for black bear management uh, within a community, um, that's about the worst uh, failure you could have. Give them some little bit of room to come through. You're going to have another bear come right into that same spot, and you're going to have to start the lessons over again. Uh, we like to keep our bears alive and learning. And uh, every year that goes by, the older they get, the more they learn. Uh, the easier they are to work with. What a good boy. There we go. Hello. Steve averages 20 calls a week from police and residents. Hi, Josh. The calls range from people afraid of the bears. All right, I understand. To people afraid for the bears. He's been there all since yesterday. Since yesterday? Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of Steve's first calls this spring is about a young male who's spotted too close to a busy street. What are you doing here? You are way too close to town. What are you doing? No, 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 no. None of that. Bluff charging is just the same as our communication. We just misinterpret what we're hearing. And the bear's saying, you know, if you could just give me some space, I'd really appreciate it. You're making me feel anxious. You're OK. You're OK. All right. All right. When Steve doesn't know a bear, he videotapes it to add to his catalog. That's how he keeps track of the bears in town each season. Just a beautiful young bear, 18, 19 months old. He's black as an ace of spades uh, with that white uh, patch on his chest. Uh, he's just so attractive. And so um, just give my bears names that I can associate with day or night. And uh, we're going to go ahead and give him the name Ace. You can see that this bear is, is too young to be away from its mother. It's small. Uh, very small, uh, doesn't know the ways of the world. You are way too close to cars and people. You can see the cars in the background going by. He's wedged in a, a busy trafficked area. Just doesn't have the common sense yet to uh, stay out of predicaments like this. You need to keep an eye on him and babysit him a little bit. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This is not good. Go back. Son of a... You bad bear! Go on! You almost got hit by a car. Go on now. Go on. Gosh, I've picked up too many dead bears on that road over the years, and don't want to pick up this one. Get! Get up there! What do the bears learn from me? Uh, they learn boundaries, just like with children, dogs, anything else you're teaching. They need to uh, understand their boundaries. Enough of that. They're not in their comfort zone when they don't have those boundaries. No more. You almost got hit by a car. You scared me to death. You hunker down and stay there. I guess this is going to be a long summer. It's going to take some work to keep him on the right track. More than three dozen bears live in the Mammoth area. During the feeding season, they hide out in a variety of different places. 
They can be found in trees, inside drainage culverts, and under porches of empty cabins. As Steve takes his daily inventory, he not only checks out which bears are in town, but he also monitors their condition. He finds a familiar one he calls Ugly Bear, hiding in a drainage culvert beneath a golf course. I was worried about you. How come you didn't come out last night? Are you hurt? He's a male. We call him Ugly Bear. Big, big adult bear. I'm about seven feet from him. Oh, all right, I understand. Dude, I've got to check you out. If you're not in good health, that's bad. It's not like you to not be out. Did you eat something bad? Have you been shot? What's up with you? Your face is just tough to look at, but... Oh, oh, dear. Come on, let's stand up. Can you stand up for me? I'll see you. I don't see any blood or anything. You still look sick, dude. All right, all right. Can you walk? Can you walk? I'm gonna leave you alone right now, but I'm gonna check on you later, okay? I can see that. Now I feel bad for calling him ugly, uh, but uh, looks like uh, something's wrong with him. I don't know what, I don't see any blood. I don't know what's going on with the bear. He might got tapped by a bumper, uh, could have gotten into bad food. I don't want to push him too hard. I'm going to give him the uh, rest of the afternoon and just sleep. It's uh, part of working with bears. <laughs> A sticker here you go thank you for saying thank you steve's work with bears has made him somewhat of a local celebrity we know he takes very good care of the the bears and it's been amazing to talk to him because he seems to know each and every bear uh which is very unusual was he bigger than me or littler than me littler okay he actually knows how many bears are in town where they live what their habits are and it's a fantastic asset to this town. Steve really cares a lot about the bears and knows what he's doing. Uh, all of my friends, everybody I know is really in favor of what he's doing and thinks he does a great job. Any other distinguishing marks? He's pretty famous in the summertime. A lot of people know him. He's always around, uh, really involved with the town. He's a good guy. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Have a good day. Despite his reputation as the bear guardian, Steve didn't set out to protect them. I used to uh, live in Southern California, moved up here 31 years ago, didn't know where it was, uh, was looking for a better lifestyle and bought a map, started driving and uh, moved to Mammoth and just never left. He worked as a carpenter and took up hunting as a sport. It soon became his full-time job. He hunted everything from ducks and geese to deer, antelope, and yes, even bears. I hunted all the different species, and um, being uh, really uh, known as a killing machine here in Mammoth, and probably one of the most successful hunters in the county. Eventually, uh, we had a huge population of bears here in Mammoth, and uh, the police department came to me knowing uh, my skills as a, a hunter, and they actually hired me to uh, take the life of the bears went out and studied the bears and made a rap sheet, a, a mug book of uh, front and side profile of each one of the bears, and then uh, figured out you know, who was who, who was mating with who, son of who, all that. During those studies to see which bears I was gonna shoot first, I was out uh, at a local dump site and out there in the middle of the night at three o'clock in the morning by myself, and the, um, all of a sudden the bears all looked into the dark and they um, just moved out. And I was like, gosh, well, what's uh, bugging them? and uh, in walked Big, a famous bear named Big. And uh, he strolled in and all the other bears stayed away while that bear fed. And then when he walked off, the other bears came back in, the lessers. I was just like, wow, this is incredible. If I could command the type of respect that he commands, I could become the biggest bear in town uh, artificially, then um, I, I, I could work with the bears and not have to kill them. 
I wish I could tell you that I had some huge epiphany in my life uh, to help the bears. Nope, I'm just somebody that wanted to accomplish the task at hand. Uh, if we couldn't resolve it, we did need to remove and destroy the bears. I thought, gosh, how could I unionize the bears? How could I just sit them all down in a circle, talk to them, and let them know how bad people can be around them? Steve's mission turned from killer to keeper. Go on now, get! Go on, get out of here! Shame on you, move off. I could work them out of a, a situation with my voice or body posturing, clapping my hands. Go on. You know better than this. Stomping my feet. Go on now, get. Move on. But if the body posturing doesn't work, Steve resorts to his special control and aversive tactics kit, or what he calls SCAT. Although this looks like a bunch of ammunition, what it is is all non-lethal or less than lethal ammunition. It scares the wits out of the bear, and they should be run from it. I call this the lipstick round, and it um, blows off like a, a big-sized firecracker at the end of its flight. Here's some rubber buckshot we can see right in there. That It's about like a bunch of pencil erasers. You can tap that bear and let him know uh, that, that he needs to move on. If something does go wrong or we need something uh, uh, in a certain situation, we also have lethal in here. But uh, none of these bears have uh, been hurt this year or any other year. Um, I, I wouldn't tolerate it. Go on, get out of here. Um, we, we, we go to great lengths uh, to make sure that a bear is never hurt uh, uh, when we work with the bear. That's not going to help him learn. Dead bears don't learn a thing. Contrary to what people think, black bears are not ferocious man-eaters. People learn about bears or see them on TV, they kind of lump them all into one group. The grizzly, the polar, the brown, and it, it's far from the case. The black is just the uh, pacifist of the bears. But that doesn't mean they don't pose a serious threat, even for someone as familiar with bears as Steve. He never lets his guard down. And if a bear does show signs that he may charge or attack, Steve always has a plan for a quick escape. In every shot, you see the white tennies. Uh, who works with bears, cougars, coyotes, and, and uh, wears white tennies? Um, I feel kind of self-conscious about it. And uh, to tell you the truth, I'd rather be uh, fast-footed uh, than, uh, you know, have, have anything else. And so I just like to have quick feet, but um, it looks awful dopey having the bear guy wear uh, white tennis shoes. By early summer, the bears are in a virtual feeding frenzy. The larger ones have laid claim to the center of town, where they have the easiest access to food but that can often put them dangerously close to people. 101, Wildlife One, I'm en route to a citizen's complaint on a bear sleeping at an uh, apartment complex. And if you have an officer that could uh, help me out there, I, I'd appreciate it. Kill her. It's an apartment complex with a lot of families and children there. I have a much higher response and maybe a much higher level of seriousness when children are involved. Uh, yeah, you'd be a fool not to. He's in the tube right now underneath us. We have a bear living in the pipe. It's been living in there for a couple weeks now, and the kids check the covert every time they come home from school, and if there's a bear in there, they'll go and get their friends, and they'll all come and bang on the pipe and yell inside the tube and try to hear the bear growl or ag aggravate the bear in any way that they can. It's fun to them. If you leave the bear alone, he's not really going to bother you, <laughs> but when it's aggravated on a daily basis, uh, it can be scary. It can get dangerous. Um, we, we, I'll just see if the air is drafting the right way with a cigarette. And uh, if it is, we'll go ahead and aerosol him out. I want to put him into the forest and uh, teach him that this is a terrible place to den. Steve's going to uh, deploy his, uh, his less lethal rounds, but we usually, we're deploying out with him, we'll deploy with some lethal slug rounds just in case the bear charges anybody. Let's put the bear down if we have to. For Steve, every call is a race against time. If he can't get the bear safely away, the police will be forced to shoot it. We're just going to uh, 
trying to spray this bear out into the open. Like Steve Serrell sprays here. pepper spray into the culvert. He usually figures right. whatever the downwind direction is and sprays it in there. And it usually that gets the bear to come out. Yeah, we might get a little draw. <sighs> You'll be able to hear his feet on the metal bottom, clink, 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 clink. Oh, what is he doing? All right, I'm going to go ahead and deploy a um, flashbang device. He obviously doesn't want to come out. We'll go ahead and grab another tool. Uh, this one is like a little cherry bomb. Non-lethal, we'll push him out of this tube. Oh, hey, check it out, there he is. I got him out right away. Let's go do the follow-up right now. It's a uh, mental game. Wow, his voice is touching me from a distance. They don't know what a, a rubber slug is or rubber buckshot. Um, they have no idea. They sting you, you know, make your eyes water, but uh, they're developed not to split the skin or cause injury. Appreciate your support. Thank you, sir. Been working the territory here? Yeah. I've been here, what, 12 years now. Um, and Steve, you know, got into this stuff years ago and kind of educated the community and the police departments. Pretty much his program but we've adopted it, and he's now working under the umbrella for the town. So, seems to be doing well. Not every day you get to see all kinds of stuff going on around your house like this, you know? All right. I mean, we got cops shooting 10 feet outside of our door. It's pretty crazy. No, alegamente a las osos. gracias. All right. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. Dollars for donuts. The bear won't be there tomorrow, that's for sure. It's a great call. Nobody got hurt or injured. Uh, the bear's going to have a lot better day. The police officers are feeling good. I'm feeling good. Uh, that's the way you want every call to turn out. In Mammoth, spectacular scenes are everywhere. Can't wait till you see this cub. One of the most heartwarming sights is mother bears, known as sows, with their cubs. It's a beautiful little cub. <laughs> Tearing that log apart looking for bugs. This is how they uh, teach the little ones how to get the natural foods, how to get the beetles, the larvae out of the fallen log there. So that's a good thing for that young bear to learn. What did you find there? What a good bear. She's a real young sow, uh, smaller, probably 175 pounds. A little active today. She must have gotten uh, pushed out of wherever she's been denning. A lot of folks in town sometimes they get scared and then it takes them a couple hours to find a suitable habitat and get settled back down. good so far and this is what I stand for this is what I fight for uh, what we just witnessed uh, that's what our community believes in we're gonna leave them alone and uh, let them bed down in the cool of the day they just had a swim and so uh, that'll be enough for today and we saw what we needed to see good healthy bears doing the right thing By next summer, the cub should be able to take care of itself. But if it hasn't been taught how to be a bear by its mother, it may turn to people. A bear cub may imprint on people if it's a young enough bear. In those circumstances, then the bear may act more like a pet dog than a wild bear. It's a very dangerous situation, and it's also very unfortunate because you've taken the wild out of the bear. A bear cub that loses its fear of people can accidentally hurt people. 
En route to 64 Holiday Way on a report of a bear in a house. Hello. Steve gets a call about a bear breaking yeah. into a house where a young woman is hey, home hey, alone. Where are you? All right, I'm on my way. It's been dispatched on a call to uh, right up the street here. It's going to be a bear in a house, I believe, with people. The description we have, it was all black, 120, 30 pounds, uh, with a white uh, blaze on the throat and neck. He's, he's the only bear that matches that description in the town. And I'm just hoping to God that I can catch his hand in the cookie jar and educate him. Hey. Mario's in there somewhere. I got to find out which room she's in. All right. I just arrived on scene. still in there. You want to just okay to go in? Sure. We can just go in together. Is your daughter in the house? Yeah. Aria! Wait, you're in the back room? Just in that way. Stay right there with your daughter, if you would. Aria? 101, Wildlife One, I'm in the house, and uh, we're clearing the house right now. You have point of entry right here. 10-4, we're on the back deck, and uh, the kitchen's clear, but let's go ahead and check the whole house first. Claire, your house is clear. Could you tell me what you saw? I heard, like, a clanking in the kitchen, so I was hoping that it was my dad, but it was 3 o'clock, so I kind of figured it wasn't him. So I came out through here. And then I came out through this door. <laughs> I was scared, so I just kind of, I said my dad's name. I said dad and looked around the corner and just, I saw the bear pop its head out just right the corner of the kitchen there. You were right here. So and, and I only came this far because I was afraid to go in there. The bear was looking at you from right here? Yeah. And I was scared, so I ran back in there and I shut the door and it slammed. And so I'm assuming the bear got scared and then ran out. Can we take a look where the bear made access into the house? Yeah, sure. The, um, I knew as soon as I saw this, it was a pretty small bear that made access to the house. That window was right next to the kitchen. There's food there. And uh, Ace, uh, being a smart little fellow, figured out he can punch that screen out and squeeze through that small window and go inside. When the girl saw him and he saw the girl, they both became very frightened, and they both ran in opposite directions. A young bear is still a potentially dangerous bear, especially one bold enough to enter a house in daylight. Ace has caught the attention of the police, and if Steve can't keep him away from people, he'll be shot. The house is cleared, uh, but we're going to patrol the area right now and see if we can uh, find this bear. Did you see a bear? Uh, no, I saw him on the other street. Uh, I saw him uh, minutes ago by Gomez. All right, our little buddy Ace is completely blowing it. This goes on. People will call for, you know, the destruction of the bear. Did he go right through here, sir? Yeah, he's around the corner. A black one with a white chest. Which way did he go? You know, I don't know. I wasn't here. I my see. Wife was. I had my garage open. I run down the hardware store for a minute, and he got in the garage in the trash. So he was just here a few minutes ago. Yeah. All right, thank you. That's what we're looking for. Okay, I don't know where he went, though. Thank you very much. I would really like to find him right now. Now some time has passed. We certainly can't spank him for uh, what he did a half hour ago. He won't connect it in his mind. And so um, we're going to patrol a little bit more in the area before we call it off. Hello. Oh, there you go. I I I'll follow you in. Steve gets word that Ace has gotten into the same home he was in earlier today. This time, a different family member was in the house. When I got here, I saw I saw a bunch of people out in the 
in the driveway, kind of pointing it. Well, you know, the bear went that way, the bear went that way. Steve Searles arrived shortly after. Hey, man. Hi. Did he try to come in your house again? Through the same way? Um, a different window. Uh huh. How long ago did he leave? Uh, I called right away as soon as I heard it. Thank you. Steve Searles went ahead and started tracking the bear down. As we got across the street, we saw the bear in between two houses. He's here. You bad bear. You bad bear. Yelling at him hasn't worked, so Steve uses rubber bullets that will startle the bear, not hurt him. It's a psychological game uh, that you're seeing with me and the bear. Everywhere he goes, people are, oh, look at the bear, look at the bear. If everybody said, get the hell out of here, uh, we'd be good to go. But uh, everywhere he goes, people coddle him and uh, treat him nice. He's nice to them and so on and so forth. And um, busting into a house, you're crossing my line, you know? It's a common occurrence, you know? I mean, the bears live here. The bears were here before we were. You know, we just got to be careful with the way that we treat them because we don't want this kind of thing to happen. They're, they are wild animals. That uh, rubber ball met its mark, and hopefully we'll uh, put a stop to this tonight. Yes, ma'am, we just shot him with a rubber ball, and uh, twice. It's non-lethal, it just looks lethal. Is it, a, is it a little one, a baby one? It is just a real young bear. He's Aww. 17 months old, 18 months old, and he's just as dumb as they come. War we'll work with him some more this year, and um, I have high hopes that we can turn him around. Steve's job makes for an unconventional family life. Stop that! He's on call 24 hours a day. You bad bear! But as the feeding season heats up, he's called away more and more. Hello. Hi, Marianne. No, no, go ahead. Being married to Steve is very interesting, uh, fun, never a dull moment. There's another little bear coming this way, a little two or three year old. We met in 1985. I was waiting tables and he would come in for dinner and stuff and we got to be pretty good friends and that was it. My wife is from New Zealand. We've been married for 18 years. I'm just the luckiest guy in the world. I go to all these benefits and stuff and everybody's coming, yay, Steve, Steve's a great guy. But she does everything for me so that I'll take care of the bears. And so she sees that as her way of uh, helping with the animals. You guys gonna leave the bears alone? All right. He's a good person trying to do a good thing. And um, he really has his heart and soul in this. Just really very caring, very, very caring. Normally, he's all excited when he comes through the front door, and he's like a kid in a candy store. He loves what he does and does what he loves. I have a nine-year-old son, Tyler Searles. My son sees bears on our porch and in our front yard, and he just thinks that kids live like this since he was born. I always have bears, and so um, he just thinks that it's part of life and doesn't know any different. My son, um, he was born here and raised here, and uh, being the son of the bear man, it's uh, a big job, huh? Yeah, everybody knows that you, I'm your dad, huh? Yeah. Tyler's very proud of his dad. If he wants to follow in his dad's footsteps, yeah, sure. We need to back up, Ty. Would you take this for me, buddy? All right, and a flashlight, too? All right, we're on to the next call, my man. I'm not gonna stop Steve from doing what he loves would turn into a miserable person. Uh -oh. A friend of mine was out for a moonlight ride with a buddy, and I uh, came upon a bear trapped in a dumpster and uh, called my house and asked if we could come up and see if we could help out. Ah! Yeah, I can hear a cub. Cub inside here. And Mama and another cub are over here in this area. 
It's the threesome. It, how cranky is she? I, I stood up. I went over here. She started going. Ooh, 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 ooh. That's she good. gave me a little charge. Uh -huh. I, I gave her some room. Uh -huh. And so we just wait for you to show up. With these metal sides, it's a perfect bear trap. Uh, the bigger bears, they can pull their way out. But uh, it's a real bad thing for young bears. Hello. Hello. You're OK. You can see that she's a little bit stressed, and she's protecting that one cub, and she's going to stay around till this one gets out. As the minutes pass, the cubs' cries grow more frantic, and the mother more agitated. Just back up a little bit, and let me grab this ladder. A mother bear with cubs has the reputation of being one of the most dangerous animals on the planet. Hello, good girl. Where are you? Where are you? Good girl. There you go. There you go. Let's go. That's all right. Go on. Go on. Most black bear attacks come from an anxious sow defending her young. Can you put a light on her, please? Oh, look at you. Look at you. What are you doing? What are you doing? No, you stay back. You stay back. Uh, all right, I see. I see what's going on. This cub's going to come squirting out of here quick. All right. Back off. Back off. Back off. All right, all right. The bear's got the ladder. Ready? Here we go. Here we go. That's how you want to see every call go. Um, I've seen a lot of cubs locked in dumpsters. This scene was just a little bit different uh, with an extra cub. The sow was getting pretty anxious right there towards the end. But um, as I started putting the ladder down in there, uh, the bear started pulling on it to come on out. So he wanted out in the worst way. And uh, through a little help from a friend, um, it all turned out good. have um, one bear that I've been watching for the last three or four days. His name's Ugly Bear, and uh, he has been laid up. He's not taking water or food. He's not urinating or defecating. I don't know if it's something that he ate or maybe been uh, hit by a car or something like that. But um, from this angle, he doesn't look like he's in distress or anything like that. Uh, the sun comes up. They have to take cover. There is a lot of people in this area. We're kind of geographically in the middle of town, so it's a tenuous thing. The um, Yes, sir. Thank you. The, the manager is only worried about the people that walk by here and that they might bother the bear or see him or tease him. What do you feel like doing, Sarge? I think we maybe should try and get him to move or something, although it's pretty unusual for one of these bears to bed down in a spot like this. We don't see it too often. Um, you got a good point. You know what? Let me just test his metal. I'm just going to walk over to him, see if, I, if I can ID him. You want to grab a shotgun lethal just to back here, or are you? Uh, sure, good precaution is a good idea on every call. Hey, buddy. What are we doing this morning? What are we doing? Boy, are you got a big head. Are you OK? Are you all right? See that big, long lip? That means he's getting pissed off. It's all right. <laughs> I like you, ugly bear. I do. Oh, come on. When Ugly Bear refuses to leave peacefully, Steve steps up his efforts. Hey. Hey. You want to walk out of here? Hey. Hey, he's coming on, this come way, on. Steve. To us? He's coming this way. Coming this way. Hey, you guys, let's go. Are you sick? We do have some people in the area. We'll all go easy now. And uh, I'm going to give them just a little bit of uh, uh, Come on. Let's get out. There he goes. Go on now. Go on. Yeah. 
Spawn! Nice. Yeah, he looks like he's walking okay. He looks to be in good health. Uh, we've been watching him for three or four days in bad health. And uh, other than being at the wrong place this morning, he looks like he's going to be okay. So we'll monitor him for the rest of the day. Um, crazy. While we were asking a lady to move out of the way, she's reporting a second bear just uh, 100 yards from here. We're going to walk over there and take a look at that. Can you crawl up there? <laughs> How did you know he was up there? He's been there all since yesterday. Since yesterday? Yeah. They're always up in this tree. They are? Wow, this look at him. Different. All day yesterday, you knew he was up there. Man, we should have called you. I'm like a cat. He he this, the down same down. bear, huh? I think so. All right. He's different. We he looks smaller than the one yesterday. He does? He does, yeah. Was he sleeping then in the he, same spot? No, he was on the other side. He's right, he's right up there. And then I checked, like, around dusk, and he was gone. So I think this is a new one. All right. Yeah. You know how they found out that he was up there yesterday? He urinated when somebody uh, walked by. <laughs> <laughs> they did. They're taught all their lives to climb a tree sure. in fear. Well, so that's... he's showing respect to the people. With your guys' permission, we're going to let him sleep up here today. Um, with all this attention, he'll be gone in the morning. <laughs> he's cute. <laughs> By midsummer, Steve has responded to dozens of bear calls. But many of his most troublesome incidents involve young bears. One in particular he's been tracking is a light-colored cub whose mother may have been killed by a hunter. This bear's name is Blondie. It's amazing that he's still alive. He's been on his own for a long time. Uh, real young cub, very small as you can see. Um, what he's eating is bird food. It's the uh, crack cocaine of a bear's life. These homes here are built uh, right on a uh, stream, so it's a natural corridor for the bears. He's living in the woods. He comes up to the backs of these houses and take advantage of the uh, bird food. Comes over here, leaps from here to the tree and goes up and gets on this branch. And he just takes the feeder and drops him to the ground. Then he goes down the tree and starts his little feast. So he, he's amazing. He's been staying out of trouble the last couple of weeks, but he did enter this home last week through an open window. And uh, that's just terrible for a bear to learn those lessons. Um, this bear, as cute and small as he is right now, is going to grow up to be a big, huge bear. And uh, if we don't train him correctly from the start, then uh, we get what we deserve. I don't want to hurt the bear. I want him to survive. And he's really a cute little guy. He has no fear of people because people have no fear of him. He's standing here looking at me while he's eating. If a bear is eating in front of people, and uh, he becomes conditioned to that, which this bear is conditioned to it, technically I'm part of the problem. By the bear observing me, observing him, it could be that I helped condition the bear that uh, people are loving, they're gentle, they're kind. This is um, a struggle I go through every day. It's still a challenge, you know, whether to just lay into him or to uh, lay off. But this time, I think we're going to lay into him. Steve will use pepper spray. The effects only last 10 to 15 minutes, but hopefully the memory will last much longer. What are you doing, bud? This is going to get you in a bad way. What should we do about it? Huh? What should we do about it? It's you and I. What should we do about it? I'm glad you're alive. What are we going to do about this? What's this? What is this? What is this? Yeah. I'm sorry, buddy. You're doing good, huh? You're doing good. What was that? 
That stinks, huh? So none of the pepper spray got in his face or in his nose. Uh, the bear is analyzing us, analyzing the decision, the noise that he just heard. Uh, I should have thrown the can at him. Here he comes, thinking about it again. Hi, Blondie. That stuff stinks, huh? Come over here and I'm gonna give you a whole snootful. We can smell the pepper spray, it's still in the air. This thing's been contaminated a little bit, and so that's why the bear moved off. He wants to live. He wants to get on enough weight to make it through the winter. He's obviously not going to make it through the winter at the size that he is. Blondie, just like Ace, just mischief that could lead in the future to the destruction of a bear. If they don't learn the lessons of staying out of houses, you need to curb uh, your behavior, or it could lead to bigger problems. Toward the end of summer, Mammoth Lakes, California is jammed with tourists and black bears. It's just awesome. For the tourists, foraging bears are a form of entertainment. Uh-uh, no closer. But for the bears, late summer triggers a desperate search for food before winter draws near. Friends of mine were up to the lake's base and got to see the uh, salmon cup. It's uh, predictable this time of year. Uh, they can't tolerate being near those big males, and so they bug out and go up to the lakes. At the beginning of the season, this sow was teaching her cub to look for natural foods. But in survival mode, the bear has become bolder. This is a classic example of what you don't want with bears. A young mother uh, with some difficult habits uh, teaching her young. The fishermen, uh, they go off and, and leave their stringers, and uh, she pulls those fish up and uh, feeds them to her cubs. So does it set a, a, a bad example? Absolutely. Determined bear. Oh, yeah, I had one almost two pounder. The bears got it. Get a good meal. <laughs> I think she's eating it right now. This is what they do. They want their breakfast. They come around lunchtime. They don't bug the people. They just want our fish. For them to get those uh, occasional fish along the shoreline, they're taking out the uh, ones that are dead or dying. And uh, making it part of their diet is not a, a bad thing at all. I think it's appropriate. But stealing stringers, boy, if that goes on every day, it can lead to problems. Hungry bears can be wildly unpredictable. Sometimes they do things that are shocking, even to Steve. Stop that. Go on now. I use a pushpin board to map where my bears are. And uh, just in the last few days, uh, we've had our first frost. We've had a huge wind event. Um, Mother Nature is talking to these bears. The uh, orange pin in the center represents where we are today. That's my house. And uh, the blue pins uh, represent the known bears and where they are here this morning. And uh, where this pushpin map looked a lot different 30 days ago, 60 days ago, it'll indeed look a lot different 30 days from now. We have a, a pretty full habitat. The uh, carrying capacity is uh, probably at its peak or close to it. And uh, the social capacity, how people feel about the bears and a little bit of mischief they get into, um, that's being challenged as well. Is there potential uh, for a problem? Certainly. While out on his regular rounds, Steve tracks a large bear moving through town. A lot of homes around here, a lot of folks, and the bears search those areas out, and I search those areas every day, and uh, we rolled up on them, no harm, no foul, and uh, we'll go take a look. 
the bear heads towards a culvert, then suddenly takes a dangerous detour towards a nearby house. The burglarized in that house. God. He enters through a window, undeterred by the people inside. Can you come out of the house, please? There's a baby in here. I can't. All right. Where's the baby? In bed, asleep. Scaring me. There's a baby right here. A wild bear who feels cornered in a confined space like a house may react out of fear. Get out of here! Get out of here! And the outcome could be deadly. You bad bear! Get out of here! Steve drives the bear out the same way it came in. One on one, wildlife one. We just saw a bear uh, live real time uh, break into a unit. Uh, the lady was out here uh, enjoying the day. Uh, asked her for people that are in the house. Uh, there was a small baby. It's still in there. It's safe. The police department will come to back me up right now. I'm still vibrating. <laughs> it's pretty scary. By the time an officer arrives, the bear is long gone. Well, hello. Hello, sweetie. Hi there. How are you? Hello. Saw the bear, huh? Thank God I didn't see him. <laughs> Scared me enough. Yeah. Disaster narrowly averted. But the most reckless bear this season is Ace. He's almost been run over by a car. Broken into the same home twice. And been shot with a rubber bullet after stealing a bird feeder. And Steve has gotten another call that the little bear is at it again. It's trail mix and gummy bears, the attractant this time. They eat such a huge volume of food. That's all they do is eat. The bears are just a stomach with four feet. They'll eat just about anything this time of year. We'll follow the trail backwards and see where it came from. We got three here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. A bear wouldn't walk very far with um, such a uh, prime treat. So I'm guessing he got it real close to here. I've seen Ace many times here, three or four times. And he's been in the neighborhood. He's a very cute cub. But uh, he's, you know, I'd say two or three feet high. And a little, little challenging. Yeah, I'm guessing it came right through here and got into this property here. Well, either a cub got in the car or a dog. Is that little black bear been around here again? Yes, ma'am. He was here just a little bit ago. Have you seen him? Well, we've seen him earlier, but not today. Not today? Living in Bear Alley, we get to see the bears quite often. They come right through from the mountains on the other side of our subdivision, and they come right through between our houses. He just got a 12-pack of trail mix and gummy bears. We're used to them. We understand we they're to be observed. We don't try to go near them. I mean, we definitely know that they're, this is not Disneyland where we live. This is a real place. We need to put a stop to it. Oh, yeah. He's going to get hurt or killed. Yeah. And um, just give me a call, even if he's not doing anything wrong, and I'll come over and professionally be mean to him and reinstill his natural fear of humans. This has gone on for, you know, a month now. Yeah. And uh, we need to put a stop to it. Oh, yeah. It's sad. It really is. Um, bears, I guess, just do what comes naturally to them. And if they can find food, they find it whenever they, wherever it needs to be. And if it's in a car, uh, that's where they go get it. And, but unfortunately, that's not acceptable to the people who might own the car. Ace is already too comfortable around people, so much so that city officials like Councilman Skip Harvey are concerned about what will happen when he gets big. Ace is actually in a position right now where if he continues his behavior as he has in the past, we're going to have to make a decision on whether or not he can be coaxed to go back into the wild and live like a bear should, or whether he may have to get an order to take him out. With mounting pressure on Steve to get Ace under control, he follows the gummy bear trail, hoping to find him. 
There he is. I just want to uh, catch him and uh, kick his ass again and see if we can uh, improve improve his uh, attitude around people. Let's go up there. I'm tired of playing cat and mouse with this little bear. Next time I catch him, I want to light him up. We love our bears, but when they become criminals and start breaking into houses and put human life in jeopardy, then we have to take that into consideration and take the proper action to resolve it. Ace isn't the only young bear getting into trouble. Blondie's at it again, too. OK, thank you, and we'll be in route. He's back stealing food from the same house where Steve caught him just a few weeks ago. And I don't know how he got up. Yes, ma'am. Is he up there now? He's laying on the deck. He's right here. We need to teach that bear a lesson. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Hey, what are you doing here? You bad bear. You bad bear. No more. Go on, go home. Go home. Get out of here. You bad bear. don't like to spray bears like that, you can see that it painted the bear red. Uh, not, not only that, but um, the sound of the <laughs> is super unnatural. Pepper spray is affecting his ability to smell, to see, and taste. I couldn't take him to a closer point of doom and disaster and potential death in his mind. All of the things that he relies on for life have been shut down right now. And that's part of my job, is uh, cruel to be kind, to educate that bear that this has got to stop. Uh, that's why I sprayed him point blank in the face. I think that uh, the very best thing uh, is what we did. Uh, teach that bear a lesson. Stay away from people. They will entrap you. They will run you over with cars. Uh, they will uh, uh, be kind and cutesy with you and then call the police or call the Department of Fish and Game. So uh, I'm always reluctant to use that much pepper spray on a bear. I know how bad it, you know, it hurts them for 12, 15 minutes. But um, I think that in hindsight and, and looking at all the information that we have, it was the very best thing I could have done. We'll take a look at the, the uh, steps that these people have taken to alleviate the uh, problem. The uh, tree here that makes access uh, to the second story deck has been wrapped with um, sheet metal to um, stop the bear from climbing the tree that makes access. Uh, the second thing that happened is the bears were using the um, these uh, rods that, that are structural to the deck, they were using it as a ladder system to get up on the deck. The homeowners have gone to even greater length and yesterday installed uh, wraps, uh, metal aluminum wraps on all these posts so that the bear can't get traction on the posts. Uh, these folks spent, you know, a lot of money uh, to make their deck bear proof and yet they had the bear on their deck for a second time. You can see his paw prints right there. Uh, he pu pulled himself up. That's easy to do with his body weight. And um, got up here like this. Then he um, pow did a power move. He grabbed right here. His back foot, that's a back foot print right here. He put his foot right here, his other hand right here, put his other hand up here, pulled himself up like I'm doing. I'm not as quite as uh, agile as a black bear. We can see his handprints right here. Uh, then he did a one-hand muscle right here, pulled himself up and gained access to the deck. Here's Blondie's hair.
always kind of hurts my feelings. It's, uh, it's a double-edged sword. You know, loving bears is to uh, reprimand them, and to reprimand a beautiful little bear like that uh, it doesn't bring me any pleasure. It's not a fun thing, but uh, certainly proved the point. And I'd bet my bottom dollar, uh, the bear won't be back anytime soon. Um, we taught uh, the young bear a lesson, Blondie, that uh, that you won't soon forget. Got a fire over here in Sherwin Lake. The aircrafts are coming in on it. The worst thing that we could have happen in our community right now is a forest fire. After a long, hot summer, the Sierras are a powder keg of dry vegetation. Forest fires are frequent and frightening. Probably the two number one things that uh, Mammoth cares uh, most about is the wildlife and uh, fire. Today we have uh, both. We have a couple hundred acres burning just a mile east of town of prime uh, wildlife habitat and bear habitat. We can hear the planes overhead, and uh, they're taking an all-out aerial assault on it today, and hopefully it's going to get this thing under control. Forest fires drive wildlife out of the wilderness and into populated areas. We just got a thing on my voicemail that a bear was hit this morning on Highway 203. It's deceased, and uh, we'll go on. Um, the uh, road department has picked it up and put it out, and we're going to go down and uh, see if we can measure it up and identify which bear was uh, hit this morning by a car. It's going to be right down here in the town yard, and we'll try to take it off their hands and uh, treat it with a little bit of respect. It doesn't turn out to be a local bear, but even the death of an unfamiliar one is painful. It's a young bear, male. This bear is two and a half years. Out in traffic and uh, paid with his life this time. And um, There's nothing more we can do for this bear except treat him for it with some respect and put him out in the forest. And um, we'll go ahead and take uh, possession of the bear at this time. We have uh, <clears throat> at the landfill, uh, we have a pit for dogs and cats. Uh, I don't like it. I don't like the wild bears going in there or any wild animals. And so uh, I put them out in the forest and do it my way. And uh, we'll say a prayer and put this guy out, let him return to, return to the soil. The local tribe is the Paiute Shoshone. They are the bear clan, the bear people. They're still alive today. They honor me and my family for the work that we do with the bears in the white people's way. And uh, they teach me about uh, their way. This is uh, sweet sage. Um, this is uh, called a smudge stick. The Paiute people believe that um, that the bear takes our prayers. We pray to the bear, and uh, he's here to help us out. And um, they believe that the bear, uh, we pray to the bear, the bear spirit, and that the bear takes a message up to the top of the mountain uh, to the creator uh, with the smoke and um, to your God, whatever God you pray to. And that the eagle takes the message from the bear and takes it up to the heavens. We might be thankful for another day that we have here, for the water we drink, for the air we breathe, for the food that we have, uh, for the winged ones, the ones that hop, the ones that crawl, uh, the four-legged, the two-legged. A smudge stick, it's to um, clean us up a little bit. 
we just smudge him off. Last thing he seen was a car. And uh, we just try to um, make it in a good way and that this bear could go on and, and go back to the earth. We have a beautiful spot for him uh, with his home in the back. And uh, we'll put him up on this little ridge here. And um, the animals will come and, and take him and eat him. And um, we like that a lot better than putting him in our landfill. All right, buddy. Doya, doya, quina. Doya, doya, quina. All right, buddy. We'll see you later. end of summer marks a new phase in the feeding season. For Steve, it's the craziest time of the year. What in the world? It's what he calls the fall shuffle. Get out of there. Come on, let's go. This is the time when the bears are moving around and changing it up as they make weight for the winter. Go on now. I have bears that are showing up. There wasn't room for them in town. The, the uh, town was full at its capacity. As those big bears made weight and, and moved out of town, then it, it leaves a void or a sink for other bears to come in and, and try to make their fill. Every year, the town braces itself for the onslaught of a whole new crop of hungry bears. I had incidents where people had food on the table, and the bear actually went right through the window. And just because the food was there, they smelled it, they saw it, and that was a major concern. It, you know, so we try to educate and say, look, you know, you live in the mountains, beautiful area, but still, if you're cooking and the food or those pies on the table, just like Yogi the bear, they're going to go after it and try to get it. All right, I'll be right there. We had a call. A sow that we've been uh, tracking up at the Lakes Basin and uh, her little cub had come to town. And first thing they did was get into trouble. Well, the baby cub got locked in a car. We rolled out there real quick, and uh, it had been in there for quite a while. Here we go. Come on, you're out of there. Come on, come on. Let's go this way. Do you guys have a, do you have a beeper or something? You're OK. We all right? All right, all right. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. No damage to the car. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. A sow, she wasn't uh, peeling out and getting the hell out of there. I didn't want to leave the area without the cub hooked back up with the sow. Go on. The sow is three, three and a half years old. Go on now, get. It'd be like a teenager having a kid. Go on, get. Ha. If she doesn't have a lot of life's experiences, and she's not teaching her young. Uh, the best habits. Uh, bears need to teach their young where to uh, get that natural food source. Go on now, get! The bear opened the car door, got in, oh. and then closed it and opened it again. Wow. And closed it, and the, bit, the cub just was stuck in here. Wow. Took a bite right here, took a chunk out of this. Maybe tore out this whole thing. Then there's a panel on the back door that he ripped off. Not a good thing. Probably $500 to $1,000 worth of damage to the inside of this young lady's car. It's just that time of year. You got to be ready for these calls and, and for uh, what the knuckleheads might do. But some situations are far more dangerous than others. Hey, Rick. Steve gets word of a break-in at the golf course snack bar. When he arrives, he discovers a bear he's known for years. Hey, one ear, stop Get it. Get down there. Get, Get back, one ear. Get down. Go on. Go back. Go back. Go back. To personally look in my face and not move away when I approach him, that doesn't stand with me. It was really a scary 
because it was almost like a face-off with the bear and Steve, and they were kind of going back and forth, and the bear just did not want to leave us alone and not want to leave the snack bar alone because of all the food. No. No one here. Get that. Go back now. To come in for unnatural food in the middle of the day, not uh, remembering what a black bear is supposed to do, move away from people. He knows me. I know him. He need to move away as soon as I approached. Boy, this old bear uh, and me go way back. Jeez, it's got to be nine or 10 years ago uh, when we first met one year and uh, had some run-ins with them on the elementary school campus with children present. Uh, it was during recess, and uh, our school is right next to the open forest. It really crossed my mind that if I was going to do bear work and be seen responsibly within the bear community, that the proper thing to do was uh, shoot and kill one ear just for being on the campus. He was a huge adult male with his ear bitten off from fighting. And uh, there was about 200 kids present. It would have been uh, horrible to destroy that bear in front of those little eyes. And uh, I just get going with the successes of the program. And uh, we used non-lethal on the call. We had a lethal back up there. We had uh, myself and another officer went non-lethal. And we had a final officer close the road so we could put him out in the forest. The bear left that day and didn't return for two years. It's one ear. Where have you been? I haven't seen you in years. It's one ear. That's incredible. It's your first day home, and you're in big ass trouble. Uh, we tuned him up again. So, hey, none of that. None of that. Took about 60 seconds to reinstill his natural fear of humans. Uh, he left. No more. No more. Today, One Ear is showing no sign of leaving. He's backed into a culvert, creating a face-off with Steve. It's just not typical being a bear acting like this. I'm eight or 10 feet from him, and uh, he's just sitting there looking at me. He wants what's behind me. So it's a standoff as long as I'm here. Never seen anything so rude. No more. No more. Yeah, and you guys are going to have to take a drop. Sorry. It was crazy. There were golfers on hole nine that didn't even know that they were actually right on top of the bear, and the bear was in the tunnel right below them. And they were looking for their ball. They had no idea what was going on. This will not stand. And he can't be uh, hanging out here scaring people or intimidating anybody. Wildlife one, Sam one. Well, good. You know what, could you meet with me at the Divot Bar and Grill on the golf course? If you could bring some non-lethal in a 12, that'd be good. I don't know if he's distressed or having a problem competing for food. He's not showing enough fear of humans, and we're about to give him plenty of fear of humans. When I got there, uh, one ear was in the culvert. He was been chased to the mouth of the culvert, and he wasn't leaving. He knew the people were scared of him, and he could scare them away to get food. That's probably one of the most dangerous uh, types of situations we can have with these guys, where, where they're were emboldened enough to confront people. He obviously got the one ear from being in a fight. Indeed. I've seen scars all over his face. Does that kind of indicate what his general disposition is in his own community? Not only that, but it might be an indicator. When he comes out of there, you'll see he's small in size for his age. And uh, he might be on the downward swing of life, um, a bear that's uh, being pushed out of his own habitat. He's obviously been in a lot of fights, had a lot of years on this uh, earth. Our primary goal is to make them afraid of people. And in the long run, that was fortuitous because we were able to use, you know, quite a bit of our bear arsenal on one ear and really teach him a lesson. I'm gonna put one right over the top and right on his butt, I think. Hey, get out of here. Go on. Get, get. Go on. The first shots are beanbag rounds. They won't hurt the bear, but hopefully they'll sting him enough to get him on the run. Go on, get. Steve follows up with a loud but harmless flashbang device. Hey, 
There you go. I was able to get three bean bags on him, and he was able to get some flashbangs in there, which is devastating and loud to the bear when he's inside when those things go off. You can imagine being in a trash can and someone beating it with a baseball bat. That's how Wonder felt. After that, he never returned. He didn't hurt him. No, no, it's just spanks. It's just a bean bag round, and it's just used to, to teach them that people suck, that we can be mean. I want to put the wild back in their eyes. I want to put the wild back in their heart. I want them to be afraid of people and run away when they see them. I rarely get to be with the bears in a no harm, no foul setting. It's always, you know, responding or tracking or doing this or doing that. And I'm tired. I got a bunch of brand new bears, none of the old push button bears that knew the ropes. When I get this tired, sometimes I'll go out and find a bear and just be with them and, um, and just try to re-energize them. Steve finds a familiar old bear under the porch of a vacant cabin. There's no need to drive him out since no people are present. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't seen this bear in two years. It's half nose. I didn't expect to see him here. This is a real shot in the arm and more than I had hoped for. Hi. This nostril's been bit off by an old bear I used to be friends with. That's a six and a half, seven foot bear in now. All right, all right. Boy, you look good. You look good, pal. I'm proud of you. I can't believe you're still alive, buddy. A big heavy bear like that uh, is a trophy for hunters. And me not having eyes on with them for the last couple, three years, uh, you just have to assume that they either died by natural causes um, or uh, were shot, you know, during the hunting season. Again, he's got to be 12 years old. Hi. Hello. Do you remember me? Can you smell me? Mm. 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 You do remember, huh, Half Nose? You do remember, huh? This is the relationship that I have with some bears. I've worked with that bear and probably spent 60 hours of time with him at that close proximity in his life. Did it lead to him coming closer to people or becoming habituated or conditioned to people? Actually, the opposite, he hasn't been in town in years. We used to vocalize like this for hours. And um, what I was saying, I'm not sure what he was saying, I'm not sure, but we used to enjoy a lot of time together. You do remember, huh? He just got home, and we don't want to push him out on him under his deck in the middle of the day. We'll go ahead and leave him alone and check on him a little later, but great day for the bears. People say I love bears. I love my wife, I love my son, I love my community. Do I love bears? I sure love this one. Thank you. We'll see you later. Every time a bear is caught too close to humans, it runs the risk of being destroyed. One of this season's repeat offenders has been the young bear, Ace. After disappearing for almost two months, he's back, bigger, bolder, and living on borrowed time. It appears Ace has gone in through an open sliding glass door, uh, went in the kitchen and helped himself while the homeowner was working in the garage. Uh, the homeowner is a retired officer that I've worked for, worked with for years and years, and um, he ended up throwing a chase lounge chair at him and running him off. Looks like the police department is going to um, issue a shoot order for this bear. It's a coin toss on which way this could go. Steve's got one more chance to force Ace to leave for good or watch him die. We'll see how the day plays out, but I'm going to spend the next couple hours just canvassing this area where he's, he's off and at. If we uh, ha have any luck at all, 
we could get a hold of this pair in the next few hours and um, see if we can convince them with non-lethal to leave the area and um, maybe change the outcome of uh, what's about to happen. There's Ace's rear footprint. There's his front footprint. Absolutely the same bear. There's a fresh bear bed right there, and uh, he could be uh, hiding here during the day. We'll keep an eye on it. This area is clear. We're going to work across the street. All right, we're clear. We haven't destroyed a bear in a dozen years for public safety. I'm really concerned. Uh, it is. Uh, It'd be a real hard thing for my community. Um, hundreds of people have seen and interacted with this little bear. Uh, that's part of what got him into the jam he's in. And um, it's led to what looks like will be his death. You know, as a chief here in Mammoth Lakes, my primary responsibility is public safety. And when a bear habitually breaks into homes because that's where he's learned to forage for food. Uh, that bear becomes a uh, public safety bear, and uh, I'm not willing to compromise a human life to uh, save a bear that uh, habitually breaks into homes and has confrontation with humans. We've identified this bear because it has broken into as many as eight or nine homes. About half of those homes have been occupied. It's crawling through open doors, going through screened windows. And traditionally, once humans have confronted it, it leaves right where it came in at. But the fear is that a human being gets between that bear and his exit point, And that is when we're going to have a major problem with this bear. What are you doing? You bad bear! The rubber bullets sting, but won't penetrate the bear's hide. Let's go find him right now. You know, um, we couldn't catch him with a hand in his cookie jar, but I just don't have the time to wait for that. Uh, we need to move the bear out of the area. So I went ahead and uh, tapped him twice with a rubber bullet. And um, uh, I'm going to continue to uh, pursue this bear and catch up to him. And I'll repeat the process until, uh, until we get the right results. So. The thing is, when he goes in the forest, we never haze him. We never harass him. That's how we um, applaud him for good behavior. Uh, today, with a shoot order on his life, um, if I catch him just right out in the forest, right behind and close to these homes, I will take extra measures to uh, move him even further through the forest. And so uh, it's not my typical way, but uh, this isn't a typical scene.
I'd like to save his life, really. For more than a week, there's no sign of Ace. You didn't see him today. No, I haven't seen him, and All I'm right. sorry, but I know we had three police officers come through the other night with their guns. Did you see a bear go through here? Uh, All right. Then Steve gets word Ace has been spotted. He responds as fast as he can, still hoping to save the little bear's life by driving him out of town for good. I'm not mad at the bear. I'm not mad at myself. I'm not mad at the police. I'm not mad at my community. Um, there's no, it's nobody's at fault. It's still an unpredictable thing and something that just doesn't come with exact answers. This is where we need Knob Hill. There he is, right here on the right. The bear eludes Steve, but not for long. You bad bear. He's directly above us, about 40 feet above my head. Now we are in a controlled situation. He can't run off. I'm going to go ahead and set him up. As soon as the cars are gone, he's going to come down that tree as fast as he went up it. And I'm going to set him up and light his fire right there at the bottom of the tree. So that's my plan. At least he uh, climbed the tree and fleed his natural instinct. That, that was correct. So that, that's a positive thing. And all the time we've spent with this bear, he's never climbed a tree. We are putting the wild back in him, but we'll just see what happens. The stalemate moves from early evening and into nightfall. Finally, Ace climbs down. It's too dark to hit the bear with pepper spray. So Steve prepares a flashbang device. He hopes the powerful blast will be enough to scare the bear off for good. You bad bear. Go on, get. Get out of here. You bad bear. Mono one, wildlife one. Wildlife one. One single non-lethal round fired at Alpine Circle. The bears left the area we're code for. Steve and Ace have had a long and frustrating season. With winter on the horizon and a shoot-to-kill order still in effect, Steve can only hope that this most recent and loudest confrontation will be their last. It's late fall, and the feeding season is almost over. The bears have put on enough weight to make it through the long winter hibernation. This is the end of the year. We just took this night. It's really cold out here, colder than it looks. And um, all the bears are scattering and going up on, on this cliff right here and on this hill. It's just packed with bears. That's where their winter over. The first snow of the season is imminent, and the bears start to retreat to their dens. They're almost uh, lethargic from uh, the huge amount of food that they've consumed in such a short time. It's a part of the year that I always look forward to after all the work. I get just to spend hours and hours with them at, at close proximity. Hello. Hello. You are ready for winter. Some of the bears will spend the winter in town. Areas that were off limits during the summer, like under porches and in culverts, will become perfect dens once covered by snow. The bears will be safe from humans who don't even know they're there. They're buried under the snow. There's no light. They don't eat. They don't uh, um, hydrate. They don't defecate or urinate for six months. The bears live off the fat they've put on during their summer feeding frenzy. Their heart rates drop dramatically, but they're not completely asleep. 
they can still respond to danger and mothers can take care of their cubs. As far as sleeping, they just do it out of boredom. And so um, uh, the bears uh, are preen every day uh, in the den, uh, clean their, their privates, uh, re-fluff their nest, if you will, and then spend a big portion of the day sound asleep. But uh, they're just uh, killing time, waiting for the spring to come so they can restart their cycle. Steve won't see the bears for several months so he takes time to visit their dens to say goodnight. A sleepy time, huh? You look great, dude. I'm sorry for bugging you all the time, but you've taught us a lot this year. Hi, ugly bear. Hi, buddy. Looking a lot better. Uh, he was sure sick there for a few days, but uh, he's doing good now. He's not gotten in any, any trouble all summer long. So uh, not the prettiest bear, but I've uh, kind of come to like him. So he's got his winter digs right here. And uh, if it doesn't flood, he'll be all set. All right, ugly bear, have a good winter. The last time Steve sees the sow and cub who caused so much trouble earlier in the season, they're headed away from town. That's a good bear. That's a good bear. And it looks like the wild bear one ear is nowhere to be found and has retreated back into the mountains. It just can't be a better example than one ear. It makes me smile because uh, I've gone through this with him, oh, five times over 10 years. Go on, get. Go on, get. Uh, I get close to killing him, and uh, then we use non-lethal and catch him red-handed. Every single time, the same results. And within days, he leaves the area, and uh, to this day, we haven't seen him again. As for Ace, the marauding youngster who faced a death sentence, Steve hasn't seen the little bear for almost a month, and that's good news. Ace, about Three or four weeks ago, I wouldn't give you a nickel for him. It looked pretty grim for him. I thought that he was just incorrigible, but right now he's staying the heck out of trouble. I've looked everywhere to try to find that bear. As a bear worker, a wildlife worker, some answers I'll never know, but I really hope and look forward uh, to seeing him in the spring. After the busiest bear season in Steve's 12 years on the job, winter finally blows in. With the bears in their dens, Steve can finally get a good night's sleep, at least until next spring, when the Mammoth Lakes bear cycle starts up again. Who are the bears to me? They are the opposite of everything that's wrong in, in our society. Um, they lead by example. They're, they're total gentlemen. They're so forgiving. They're so live and let live. They're willing to share that with me, and boy, I just love them for it. In Mammoth Lakes, California, the bears are back in town. Boy, you're huge. They're not only huge, they're hungry. He's eating a ton of grass. With tourists flooding into the area as fast as the bears. We have probably several hundred people that are right here. There's some bears there. Collisions are imminent. It's up to one man to keep bears and people yeah. safe from each other. Go, man, go. There's a golfer right there. Steve Searles. One on one. Nobody knows the bears like he does. OK. Get out of here. This season, a massive bear challenges Steve. Knock it off. Enough of that. Another leaves him shaken to the core. I got blood on my glasses. And for the first time, one wrong move puts Steve in a place he's never been. No! Black bears are some of the most imposing creatures on the planet. They can tear the door off your car and not even break a sweat. A big male can weigh 600 pounds and still outrun the fastest man on Earth. He could sprint probably at 25 to 30 miles per hour. They can scale trees, swim great distances, and sniff out food three miles away. 
Black bears can smell through a cooler that's locked inside of a car that's parked inside of a garage. In Mammoth Lakes, it's easy for bears to find food. There's fish and lush vegetation. It's a wild bear paradise, with one exception. They must share the space with more than a million tourists a year. The potential for conflict is great. It's Steve Searle's job to keep things in check. Get out of here. You bad bear, get. So as far as the job goes, I'm a really lucky guy, and I have a unique job. But it does, it's just, you know, it's the yin and yang of life. And um, I have to be the judge, the jury, and sometimes the executioner. Don't like the third one, and so it's best to do a lot more of the other two. The more proactive I am rather than reactive, uh, the better results we get. So I work a lot of hours, and I'm out here every day. Steve Searles came into the picture as a hunter originally who knew how to track. And when we began to have wildlife issues, the chief of police enlisted Steve's assistance to help control the wildlife. Go on. You know better than this. And as a self-taught professional, he has become very well educated in our local bears' behaviors and how to Come condition on. them and use techniques in controlling their aggression to help them realize that human beings probably are not the best people to be around. All right, you guys, across the bridge, let's go. Steve's official title is Wildlife Patrol Officer, but he's better known as the Bear Whisperer. For probably the last 15 years, I have um, tried to vocalize with bears. I've been too embarrassed to share that. I do it privately, and some bears, uh, when they see me coming, they will start vocalizing. Other bears are a lot quieter. Um, just through trial and error, I just um, try different techniques uh, to make my job easier. Oh, I hear ya. I would describe Steve as a completely unique personality. He's uh, intense at the same time as he can be fairly laid back. All right, you can come over here. He's dedicated his life to hanging out with the bears and getting to know them and trying to understand them. Is a brown bear? It's, it's a black, black bear. bear. So how old do you think that cub is? It is. This year? It was born in February. Over the past 15 years, Steve has developed an unprecedented program to keep people and bears apart. It begins with two rules for the bears. The first, be respectful of people. You go on. Bears that aren't afraid of people, it'll get them killed. And so, um, you know, running bears up is a part of my job. Go on. It'll just make them live longer. Rule number two, don't scare people. Knock it off. We know statistically that people are rarely, if ever, hurt or um, killed by a bear. 100,000 bears have been killed by people. There's just no denying the numbers that the bear's going to end up on the short end of the stick every time. What are you doing? Get out of there. Get out. I have this psychological hand on them. And even though I, I weigh nothing in comparison, they believe I'm the biggest, baddest bear in town. But sometimes the bears are willing to battle Steve for dominance. Enough. Shame on you. A bear's going to huff at me, and he's in trouble with me. I'm going to huff right back. I don't back down. And when necessary, Steve uses a variety of non-lethal techniques to teach the bears right from wrong. Get out of here. Go on, get. Get out of here! Get! I love bears, but um, it's cruel to be kind. They need to learn that people are mean. They'll spray them, they'll run them over with their cars, they'll kill them, they'll shoot them, they'll entrap them. And so I'd rather be mean to them professionally than have them die. Steve is one of the most interesting people I've ever met. He's trained all of our officers on, on his techniques and strategies on dealing with bears. and. We work very well hand in hand with him. Hopefully, he's going to move out of there slowly, and I'm going to back you up with non lethal. But most of the time, Steve works alone. 
Get in there. Go on. You stay in there until it's dark. Go on now. Get in there. Go on in there. Go on. For people that see me working with bears or think that I'm nutty or crazy or it's a dangerous situation, when I'm at your home or your city, that's how I feel too. I'm scared of the cities. Um, my safest place I could be is with the bears. But a bear is still a wild animal, and anything is possible. Wildlife one, loading for fifteen. Go for wildlife one, fifteen. Got a report of a bear over on Pine Road. Copy that. I'm in the area. Uh, the neighbors noticed a, a large bear building a den uh, underneath this driveway, and um, the people that were renting the home uh, called me to uh, come and take a look. Steve films as many bears as he can to identify, study, and better manage them. There's his den for the last five months. Mm. Mm. All right. Mm. Just taking a look. Mm. Boy, you're huge. Mm. This is the largest bear Steve has ever seen. It's springtime. You can't stand her here anymore. We had a long, successful winter. Mm. Mm. Sometimes I'm called for inappropriate uh, den sites. If it's too close to children or the school, we need to move the bear mm. along and let him know that it's just not a good place for him. All right. Black bears are solitary animals. If their dens are exposed, they usually abandon them. All right. You're feeling kind of anxious. But this enormous bear is agitated. Mm, you're OK. And even though there's an opening on the opposite side, he doesn't make a move to leave. <laughs> to make sure the bear isn't sick or injured, Steve needs to get a better look. My eyes are limited compared to his, and so uh, I always carry a flashlight to try to uh, light bears up. On camera, I'll catch details that I can't catch in the moment. All right. Seemed to offend the bear. All right. All right. The bear's threatening move is known as a bluff charge. Oh, easy. Bears bluff charging is something that should be respected but try to understand mm -hmm. that it's just their way of letting a human being know, can All you right. please back up and give me some space? All right. OK, OK. All right, all right. If you aren't frightened when a bear bluff charges, you're dead or drunk. It's lonely to anybody. I might have a high tolerance for bears. It doesn't mean I'm stupid. Ooh. Ooh. OK. He was uh, mooing and clapping and, and um, huffing. OK, OK. He's uh, saying, I I'd really like you to give me some room. I've been under here for five months without anyone bothering me. Now you're in my face. You have that silly flashlight. And um, would you back off and, and let me sleep? I guess I wasn't listening as well as I should. Steve wants to move the bear out and on his way. But it's a delicate situation. I thought he would take the other way out. Mm. Go back. Not hurting you. Mm. Knock it off. No! No! Stop it! Knock it off! No! Go on! You stop it! You bad bear! Don't see that every day. Oh my gosh. That's a no bear. Holy In the aftermath, you could see that the bear couldn't fit out the other exit of the den. I thought he could. You gotta give bears their room. Uh, when he came out, he had me uh, hemmed in in the corner right here. Uh, I hear my uh, vocal commands telling him to no, no, back up, hands above my head yelling at him. And uh, he responded and moved on down the hill. I learn every day things that I don't know, the bear will teach me. And so um, this was a classic example of me mm. learning. And uh, the bear was giving me the education. Wow. 
When Steve returns the next day, he finds Max back under the house. We brought a police officer over. He shot rounds from up above us. Well, I brought the bear out from the other way, and we plugged him in the ass right here. All right, all right. When it comes to personality or habits, every bear and mammoth is different. Steve makes it his business to know where they are and what they're up to. Part of my job every day is to do like a paper route. And uh, during that paper route, uh, some of those man-made den sites or daybed sites are on my list, and I check them every day. You're OK. I'm just going to take your picture. The daily rounds help Steve keep track of the bears in town. For more than a decade, he's been studying and documenting them. Year after year, many of the same bears return. There he is, that's Ace. Hello. Including Ace, a bear Steve spent lots of time teaching how to get along. This bear was going into homes and uh, became an issue. He's doing great. He hasn't been responsible for a single 911 call all last year and all so far this year. Little Red, who's not so little anymore. Whoa. Ugly Bear, who keeps himself out of trouble. The old bear half knows. Oh, you look good. You look good, pal. And one of Steve's most stubborn bears. Hello. Is that you, one of you? The bears are always in the shadows, and as much time as I spend with them, it's still hard to determine one from the other under the darkness or the canopy of the forest, it's sometimes hard for my eyes to adjust and see. Now I can see clearly. What is you? It's one ear. You're looking a little tore up, but not too bad. Steve gives each of the older bears names. Bears are only named for their physical characteristics. I don't name them Bob or Joe or Susie. I name them uh, uh, One Ear or Half Nose or Blacky, Browny, Blondy, uh, names that I can uh, help remember my uh, bears I'm working with this year. One Ear, I've known them for, geez, maybe over 10 years. He knows how to get along with people and how to stay out of trouble. But there was a time when Steve and One Ear were at odds. Hey, One Ear, stop Get it. Get down there. Go back. To personally look in my face and not move away when I approach him, that doesn't stand with me. No, One Ear. Get back. Whoa. Go back now. After countless run-ins, the old bear has finally learned to play by Steve's rules. Do the bears remember who I am? Probably better than I remember them. They have wonderful memories. Black bears are extremely smart. They're known for their ability to communicate, cooperate, and grasp simple concepts. What a nice bear. He continues to just move on out of our way and uh, give us uh, our space where it should be the other way. And this is one of the few bears that's still alive that I started the original program with. You don't get this old by being stupid, and so he's a very intelligent bear. Hello. One of the most important parts of Steve's job is keeping the bears away from crowds, especially during the height of the tourist season. I'm going to come up there and, and uh, bring up an officer in just a little bit. A large cinnamon-colored bear has been spotted inside a culvert, too close to a busy arts festival. We have probably several hundred people that are right here. There's a bear there. They have concerns about it staying the day here and likely going to ask the bear to leave. Now it'll just be a bear near the art festival, and I might use a unit over here for a few minutes. With so many people all around, Steve calls for backup. The lady who's running the event, she's concerned with the bear sleeping under the road and wants it removed. The uh, exit of the covert is that concrete buttress Where right there. Where does it come out? Over here. Right there uh, on the other side of the street. And the bear is sleeping about 30 feet in. And it is um, that concrete spillway is where the bear is going to predictably come out. 
the least offensive thing I think I could do to the bear to drive him out is touch off two flash bangs. It's just a, a, a very simple device. Um, flare gun is what it basically is for moving on wildlife. It's all uh, just a helpful, non-lethal tool. Just uh, startles the bear, lets him know that he needs to move on. The officer loads his rifle with non-lethal rounds in case the bear runs into the crowd instead of away from it. Steve went to one side of the culvert, and I went to the other side of the culvert and stood up on the roadway so where I can see the bear actually exit. He's just in the wrong place at the wrong time. I'm going to torch off two. They won't touch him. Uh, the percussion is going to drive him out. Go on now. You got to go. Steve shot the flashbang, the bear went through the culvert, out towards the golf course, and I was in position to fire a less lethal round and scare the bear if the bear was to come back towards the roadway. He's right there, bro. Go on now, get in there. Get in there now. Go on, get in there. There he goes. There he goes. So you leave it to the professional. Shut up. <laughs> Good job, man. Thanks for your help, Dan. Yeah, no problem. Anytime. Bear went the right direction, didn't bother the people, knew he had to leave, and uh, we're on to the next call. Mammoth Lakes is tucked into the forest and surrounded by green belts. It gives the black bears plenty of room to den. Here in the forest under the canopy, the bears come to stage or put in bear beds. Um, these are great examples of that. Um, you could see that it's the, a rotted, deteriorated log. And during the heat of the day, um, this material stays cooler than uh, the normal dirt or the duff. I'm about 6'4 barefoot and 180 pounds. And just to give you some kind of uh, scale for the size of the bed, uh, when I walk up on them, you know, they're oftentimes asleep or have their pads up in the air if they want to be cooling. Um, they're crimped over and, you know, more in a huddled fetal position if they want to um, keep body heat. They are diggers by profession. Um, they build them just about the size of their body. We can see two front pad prints where the bear was probably laying on his tummy. Um, it was a little bit uh, rocky for him or had too many pine cones in it and so he didn't use it for long, but we can see where a bear was trying the bed out, kind of like the fairy tale. You know, there's flowers, water, trees, um, everything you need to uh, be happy as a black bear. But they also like their privacy. They often seek out hidden spaces. Mono one, Wallace one, 97. <laughs> and sometimes they end up where they shouldn't. That's when Steve has to respond. We're in a really neat part of town. Um, a lot of these homes aren't lived in. At this one, a bear has moved in beneath the hot tub. Hi, big guy. Hello. It's cold out, huh? It's nice and warm under there. He's sleeping out of there today. But there's a problem. The bear's noises have frightened one of the grounds workers. Mm. You're OK. Mm. Hi, pal. Maybe a four-year-old, maybe a little bit older male. He's just kicking it. The first thing Steve wants to do is identify the bear. He has no chest markings, no breastplate. He has no uh, torn ears, no scars. Not that big a bear, but not too small either. Uh, but he hasn't garnered a name, but what a lovely bear. I think that bears are like people. Some of them, some of them are more standoffish, some are more easygoing. It's a good trait to have as a bear. To be very docile and afraid of people, that's a good trait, too. A bear is not a bear is a bear. Uh, they uh, come in all different varieties of um, their attitudes towards people and humans. But this is still a wild animal, and the bear is not allowed to stay under the porch after scaring someone. Those are the rules. You got to come out. You can't stay here anymore. You scared the jacuzzi guy. Come on. Go back in the woods. Let's go. Out. OK. 
After failing to drive the bear out with noise, Steve resorts to pepper spray. <coughs> oh. This form of non-lethal assaults the bear's senses, but it completely wears off within eight to 10 minutes. The only lasting effect is the memory, which can save the bear later from getting into another dangerous situation with people. Come on, out! Get out! All right, all right, that's the end of it. That's the end of it. You're all right. He's just showing submission by being in the tree. I, I don't have a single documented case of him doing anything wrong in town. And he was just uh, sleeping in the wrong spot, that's all. And so uh, what's done is done. I don't think he holds any hard feelings. I don't hold any hard feelings. And he'll go about his day, and I'll go about mine. That kind of live and let live attitude is something Steve tries to cultivate with the bears as long as they stay out of trouble. He loves just spending time with the bears. They calm him down. He's, he's got, Steve's got a lot of energy. And, uh, you know, when he's frustrated or upset about something, he'll, he'll just take off and, you know, he'll go and be, be with the bear. He's picked up a few, few traits. <laughs> mm. 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 101, one. Can you show me 10 Steve's known some of the older bears more than a decade and has become friendly with a few of them. Hey, buddy. What are you doing over there? I love you, sincere old bear. One of Steve's longtime favorites is named Half Nose. He has been scra uh, scrapping all of his life. And so, like many of the old bears, he carries several scars from uh, that. Poor nose is bit right off. And he was in a fight with a bear named Arthur, and uh, Arthur bit the end of his nose off. And so he just has half of a nose, and thus the name Half Nose. What? Did I surprise you? Me and this bear go way, way back. I've been with this bear hundreds of hours, and so we've had good times and bad times together, but it just thrills me uh, that we're here with this bear right now. Hello. All right. All right. A black bear can live into its 20s. A big part of Steve's job is to make sure the bears in town are OK. It looks like this old bear is not in good health. Steve uses a special camera to get a closer look. The eye is weeping pretty bad, but now that I can see his teeth, he's got no teeth left. I'm not going to put this bear down, but that is a messed up deal right there. All right, I hear you. I didn't know his teeth were that bad. They're just nubs. He has the uh, both lower racks, but they're just like quarter inch nubs. And the front two canines, one is snapped off and black and infected. I can see why you're moaning, big guy. This guy would be, you know, comparable to a 90 year old man. He's just about out of tools. Yeah. Their teeth are very similar to humans, and their their feet, depending on their feeding patterns and what they've been eating, their teeth can actually rot out, and that will limit their ability to obtain the nutrients and the resources that they need to continue their life. And they'll essentially die of starvation on their own accord. Now, I hate to say it or predict any bad for him, but he's just about done. Yeah. Oh, okay. OK, all right. I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I live in paradise. I work with amazing, amazing animals. But um, you know, if you're going to work with wild animals, uh, they do die. And uh, it just breaks my heart, puts a lump in my throat. OK. Hmm. All right, all right.
Steve Searles is devoted to protecting black bears, but he can't save all of them. In Mammoth, the bear's single biggest threat is traffic. I'm sorry to say that the, the accidents that we've responded to and seen this year is, is more than I've ever seen. Bears often misjudge how fast a car is going. With lots of tourist traffic and a major highway nearby, collisions are inevitable. I responded to a call from dispatch for a bear that had been hit on our highway coming into town. Steve doesn't know what shape the bear's in, so out of respect for the animal, he looks for it alone, bringing only his camera to document whatever may happen. I found the bear. All right. All right, pal. Steve's seen this bear before. It's a burly male he spotted for the first time a few months back. Wow, look at that guy's huge. Steve spent time over the winter studying the bear. You're OK. You're all right. Hey, mister. Hey, guy. When I respond to a call for an injured bear that I don't know, it's difficult. When it's one that I've spent a lot of time studying, it makes it extra hard. Hey, buddy. Hey, mister. Uh, the bear started pulling himself up the tree because he couldn't push with his rear legs. He was uh, clenching onto the branches with his teeth so that he could reposition his front paws and pull up that huge body weight. Are you all busted up? Are you all busted up? To see him pull himself up with his teeth, it broke my heart. Oh, buddy. Oh, mister. He splayed out on the branches and was in a, a lot of pain. Three of his legs were gripping into the branches, and the right rear was just hanging and dangling in the air. Steve has to make a difficult decision. The bear is in excruciating pain and his injuries are substantial. It's part of my job to put the motions aside and act responsibly for the best of the animal and do the right thing. I knew this bear had to go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Working with wildlife, um, has the good days and has the bad days. I got blood on my glasses. That's a bad day. I was really distraught that day and felt bad about putting my buddy down. got gloves, got up there and unwrapped them. I choose to put them back on the land. Putting a magnificent animal in the landfill, it, it just seems so disrespectful. Ending an injured bear's life is an agonizing part of Steve's job. It brings out a side of him few ever see. He sends the bear off in the tradition of the local Paiute Shoshone tribe who revere the bears. 
The Native Americans oh. taught me to use tools, whether it's the tobacco or the smudge or a prayer or a song. All that shows the respect I have for the bear and, and try to help them on a little bit. Through these small offerings, it helps to hopefully soothe his pain as well as mine. Take away, Not everyone considers a bear's death a tragedy. Because of their immense size, adult males are prized by hunters as trophy kills. How long ago was there somebody with a gun? Hunting is legal in California, but not in the town of Mammoth Lakes. So when Steve gets a report of a bear that's possibly been shot, he responds quickly. The man says that there was a guy with a gun 20 minutes ago, and then uh, his kids say that there's a bear that was twitching around and laying down in the backyard. If there's anybody in the area with a gun, uh, that will be a problem. So we're just going to run up here about a block away. And we'll see if we can help out a little bit. Based on where we are in the neighborhood, it's going to be likely Big Red or Little Red. Can't hardly tell them apart anymore, but this is their area. Without making too much attention. Hey, good, how are you? Steve tries to find the bear without drawing a crowd. He heads to the house where the bear was last seen and finds it under a porch. He doesn't seem to be struggling. I can see that the bear's obviously alive, and so that's a good thing. It turns out someone overreacted. The bear is just asleep. sleeping soundly. We'll probably let him be here until this evening where he can move out safely. It's midday, it's a lot of dogs, kids, people around. You just can't have this bear, you know, walking around right now. Um, it would be problematic, to say the least. I know. I know. We don't mean you no harm. Yeah, I think I woke him up. Are you all right? You look OK. All right. You're a Popeye. You're a Popeye. OK. OK. The bear turns out to be Little Red, one of Steve's study bears who typically stays out of trouble. All right. We are kind of in the middle of two busy streets, and so we don't want to move this bear right now. That's ain't good. Don't scare that bear. I just don't want to start a rodeo or have people bothering him. To make sure Little Red doesn't end up in trouble, Steve keeps a close watch, but the bear doesn't like the attention. He's got his front shoulders down. The bear's body language signals his level of anxiety. Little Red feels threatened. All right. Steve tries to calm the bear by talking to it. All right, oh, I know, I know. OK, I'll back off if you do. If we're out in the forest, we would have backed off immediately. I own the pavement. 
he owns the forest, and that's the deal we have. And um, he was trying to challenge me, basically, you know, near my home, and uh, that just won't go square with me. It's a tricky situation. At any time, Little Red could overwhelm Steve and win the battle for dominance. Black bears are strong. They're immensely strong, stronger than a human by far. And it's real easy for a black bear to overcome a human. All right, all right. Oh. No, 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 no. We already talked about that. You stay right there and get some sleep. All right? With male bears, it's often a battle of wills. For Steve to maintain absolute authority, it's imperative that he gets the bears to back down every time. We're not in the middle of the forest. We're in a residential area. All of his senses know that. All of my senses know that. It's just bad bear management to let bears bluff people. It starts with me. It'll go to the tourist locals. And um, I run this town, not him. He's more than welcome to live here, but he can't bluff people off. There you go. There you go. Come on, outside. Get out of there. Earlier, Steve evicted a bear from under a house with a jacuzzi. Now, he's been called back to the same location. Well, this bear don't mean any harm, but he's found just a great spot to hang out. And he'll remember me running him off last time. And so uh, we're just going to give him a little nudge and reinforce the message that he can't be, out here, be under here. Come on. You remember, come on, ow. Poor guy thinks he's in paradise, and I gotta let him know he's not. Come on, ow. He didn't like that pepper spray last time. Come on, let's go, ow. Come on, get out of there. But when Steve finally sees the bear, he makes a surprising discovery. Oh, hi. Well, it's not a nice bear. I thought it was the same bear as last time, but it's not. You don't want out. Pepper spray was so effective the last time, Steve decides to use it again. All right, dude. You got to come up. Here we go. There he goes. Look at that big cinnamon. Wow. All right. All right. Yeah, it was the big cinnamon, and it wasn't nice bear. As much as I know about bears, I uh, mistake them sometimes, too. To make sure the large bear is staying out of trouble, Steve follows him into the forest. This place is mine and not his. And he just has to know that, and now he does. No harm, no foul. All right. Look at the steam coming out of him. He thought he could poach a spot here. I think he's kind of annoyed with me. The bear instinctively trees himself, but he's put on a lot of weight, which signals something else to Steve. The season is coming to an end. Boy, look at his big tummy. Wow, oh, you're bigger than a house, dude. He looks like a, a Wookiee or something. Look, he's too fat. Can you imagine the pressure on his toes right now? He's a seven-foot bear with a big old gut. And I would guess that he is over 400 pounds right now. He could probably do it a little bit faster, but he's really at weight right now. He'll probably hunker down up there until uh, nightfall tonight. What a beauty. The bear is securely treed. Hopefully, he's learned the same lesson that Nice Bear did and won't be back. Nice Bear hasn't been under there in a month. And so that's a success. And now this bear knows it's uh, off limits. We'll let him be as long as he stays in the forest and not under somebody's house. To keep the enormous animals at a safe distance from people, Steve often depends on his ability to think like the bears. When he hears of a sizable bear inside a culvert where it doesn't belong, he knows exactly how to handle it. There's a lot of kids that come home from school and um, they tease the bear that's in there and. And so I, I just don't want him there. And so I'm going to go take care of this real quick. There's a green belt that's adjacent to the property and uh, make it super easy to um, have the bear go off into the forest. 
Oh, this is one of the larger culverts. Uh, they're just storm drains, really. This one's so tall that he can stand up in there and, uh, you know, get out really quickly and get in quickly. It's not the first time Steve has had to forcibly eject a bear from this culvert. We have a bear living in the pipe. It's been living there for a couple weeks now, and the kids check the culvert every time they come home from school, try to hear the bear growl or ag aggravate the bear in any way that they can. I'm going to go ahead and deploy a um, flashbang device. <laughs> But this time, there are no bystanders. It's only Steve and the bear. Well, where the bears are and what their habits are, I try to keep that secret. The police are out doing police work. I get to uh, move that bear along. And so um, the more that I can keep the bear's privacy and my privacy, it's just the better it is. I'm going to launch just a, a green mini. Uh, that's what I used last time. When deployed, the non-lethal green meanie flies erratically and makes a loud whistling noise that will scare the bear, but not hurt it. It doesn't work. The culvert is the length of a football field, and Steve can't get a good angle on his shot, so the green meanie barely makes a sound. He tries again. The full effect of the noise is lost inside the long cavernous culvert. But still, the bear knows something is not right, and instead of leaving, he feels safer hidden inside. But it's getting late, and the kids will be home from school shortly, so this bear has to move now. Come on, out. Come on. Working with the aluminum bat is just kind of uh, my calling card. The bears are used to it. I've done it for Come probably on. 15 Ow. years, and so I've always used that same bat. And I think on. the bears have you know, become accustomed to it. When they hear that bat bang, and they know it's time to go. Finally, it works. Get out. Out. Go in the woods. Go on. Get out of here. Get out of there. Go on. You bad bear. Go on. But when Steve looks inside the tube, he makes a shocking discovery. A second bear. Oh, hi. You got to come out. Once again, Steve finds himself in an unpredictable situation. Lo and behold, there wasn't one bear. There was two. To have two bears bed together is really quite odd. He deploys a cherry bomb. The non-lethal explosion should be enough to persuade the second bear to seek safer ground. Go on. Go on, yeah. Last couple of years, we've seen the bears teaming up more. And uh, I don't understand it all yet, but uh, we'll keep studying it and learning from them. But uh, the, the buddy bears seem to be in there uh, coexisting just as well as we do. It's just another twist in what has made this the strangest year Steve has ever seen. This bear has left the area and into the forest. I'm 1098, 108 available. Everything I know about bears, they taught me. I try to bounce that back and teach them. I'm not the nicest guy in the world. I uh, pretty much run alone. I work alone. I am kind of a solo guy. The bears were kind of solo, and so it really works out for both of us. As the season comes to a close, Steve spends some much needed quiet time with his bears. Hey, big fella. I know. You're all right. Yeah, this bear has certainly made weight. He is, um, looking very fit. We're glad to see him. These bears won't be in town much longer. They'll go up to altitude where they make their dens, and 
I'll be out of town for another six months. It's just a real magical time of year for me that, you know, I can see them up close and personal before they go into the long den. It's a bittersweet time. Steve can never be sure which bears will return the following spring, but in his own way, he sends them off. Boy, would I love to share with everybody what it's like to sit this close with a bear. Yeah, I don't know how to put it into words, but. I'll miss him, I will. You helped me a lot more than I help you. You have a good night. <laughs>